Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads and welcome to my book dating history tag. So I was actually tagged for this tag by Amanda from Book Apple Tree. And if you haven't checked out her channel, she has great recommendations for a lot of books, especially sci-fi and fantasy. And she'll give you recommendations that are not your norm. These are not necessarily the ones that you're finding everywhere on BookTube. And she tagged me in this a while back, but it was a busy couple of months, so I haven't had a chance to do it yet. And I figured February is the month of love, so why not do the book dating tag here in February? And if anybody else is interested in doing it, this is the perfect time to do it. This book tag was originally created by Chastney G and she does an amazing job, it was hilarious. So if you wanna find out more about Chastney or Amanda, go ahead and check out my description box. Okay, so the first question is first love. What was your first love? And I had definitely have books that I love and I've talked about before from my childhood. But for this, I kind of went with when Amy was in her the years where she was getting boy crazy, what did she first find that made her little heart a flutter? And I decided to go with the Sweet Valley High series by Francine Pascal and the Girl Talk series by L.E. Blair. And yes, the, those are very... <laughs> embarrassing at this point in my life, but I loved them when I was younger. I loved the romance that was in them. I just the cute little relationships that were formed and and the dynamics between all the characters. Absolutely love those series. And I remember I probably still have them somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe I eventually got rid of them, but I had them boxed up at some point and I haven't seen that box in a while. I wanted to tell you a little story. I don't know if I should, but I'm, I'm going to anyways. <laughs> story about pervy little Amy when I was when I was much younger and I loved going to the library I'd go to the library probably like uh, after school most days of the week I liked going into the adult romance section and uh, very scandalously picking out books from the shelf and just flipping through until I could find salacious scenes so that was my beginning into the world of smutty books <laughs> What a weird child I was. I mean, I haven't changed much. I'm still pretty weird, but <laughs> I guess that's another first love. And how I got into romance books, because I, I got into romance books pretty young. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> Outside your genre, what genre is my favorite? And I'm thinking of this as like my type. My type of book is honestly nonfiction. I know that that seems strange because that is definitely not other people's types, but if I go into a bookstore and I have no idea of what I wanna pick up, I feel much more comfortable going to a nonfiction or science nonfiction section and just picking up books randomly without having to do any research on them. If I go into any other section, say fantasy, romance, any of those sections, I feel like I need to do some research. I just, I'm not comfortable just picking up books random when it comes to the other genres. I don't know if that counts, but it's it's something that I'm much more comfortable and confident with. The second part of that question is, what book have you read outside of my genre or my type that I've really liked? The book I'm gonna go with for this one is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green because this was a book that I really never expected to enjoy or want to read and I ended up really, really loving it. It was completely out of my genre and my comfort zone because it was YA. I guess, actually, after this past year, I can't say that because I read so many YA, but it wasn't something that I would have ever picked up knowingly, and so I feel like that was outside of what I'm comfortable with. Question number three. What book catfished you? Well, you've already heard this answer, and I'm gonna use it again. It was Lord of the Flies by William Golding. That was a book I really expected to enjoy. I, I really did, I, I thought I would love it. It just seemed like a story that sounded very interesting and I had heard good things about it and it catfished me. I mean, that one made me very sad. <laughs> it pulled me under, it dragged me down, it made me feel insecure. <laughs> it took away all hope. <laughs> Don't catfish people, that's not nice. Question number four. Does size really matter? I mean, this is a very important question. And I would say that no, it doesn't matter. I, I can read short books and I can read long books and I prefer whatever length book you give me. However, if I'm gonna be disappointed in the length of a book, typically it's going to be of the shorter variety. I, I would rather have a little too much than too little, if that makes sense. 
Question number five, out of your league. Name a book that was out of your league, but you went for anyways. And for this one, I'm gonna definitely have to say Ulysses by James Joyce, because I've tried that book at least once, maybe twice, I own it. And just, he's just too good for me. <laughs> He's just so above me. <laughs> but that being said, I'm gonna be reading it again. So in the next two months, March and April, I'm gonna be buddy reading this with Amanda from Book Apple Tree, and I'm really excited to get into it. I actually have a companion novel that can go with it as well, so I could read that alongside it, just in case I need a little bit of guidance, because the stream of consciousness on this one is so beyond anything that I've experienced before that I'm, I'm definitely, it, you know, I, I, I'm nervous. I'm nervous about this one, but I think that we'll get through it. And we have two months to do it in, so I wanted to give it plenty of time. Question number six, kiss, marry, kill. Name the book that you would kiss, the book that you would marry, and the book that you would kill. The book or series that I would kiss is the Guilty Pleasure series by Laurel K. Hamilton. This is the Anita Blake series. It's an urban fantasy, a vampire slayer, Anita Blake, and vampires wear everything, wear rats, wear wolves, wear lions, wear tigers, wear everything. And it's very sexy and very exciting. Laurel K. Hamilton initially decided she wanted to do this series as an erotica, but her publisher at the time wanted her to make it lighter until she got a better audience or something. They wanted her to be more focused on the action, less focused on the sex. I really fell in love with the series when it was less smutty and it, then it becomes more and more smutty. And it's not that I didn't enjoy the smut later on, it was more that I had liked the original format so much and the action and the characters that once we got more into the erotica and it was really heavily erotica, I was like, ah, the story's kind of gone for me. I, I would say I would kiss that series because uh, it was a very attractive series. <laughs> The second one is Mary, and I would marry Becoming by Michelle Obama because Michelle brought all the things into my life that I would want for a happy, healthy, sustainable life. She made me feel so secure and so wonderful in reading this book that I would absolutely love to marry Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's fantastic, fantastic book. And the book that I would kill, this is probably no surprise either, I hated Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. I didn't like the style, I especially hated the character of Robinson Crusoe. His experience being stranded on this island was so cushy, was so comfortable. Let's see a little bit of struggle or something. He didn't have anything to come back from. So I just, I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan at all. Question number seven, the ex you just won't let go of. A book that you just keep going back to. So for this one, I'm gonna go with Dracula by Bram Stoker because I love this book. I really, I really love Dracula. And I've, I've read it quite a few times already. And I feel like this is just a timeless story and it's seasonal. So it's nice because during the haunting times of the year, this is a great book to pick up. And I, I don't get sick of it. I could read it every year. If I want to read it every year for October, maybe I'll do that. That's the ex that I can't let go of that Dracula. <laughs> Question number eight, the bad boy or girl on your shelf. Name the book that is the bad boy on your shelf. I'm actually gonna go with one, it's not physically on my shelf, but I've been reading for the last five months and that is The Witching Hour by Anne Rice. And this is a book that is a bad boy for various reasons. For one, it hasn't got itself off my TBR. It's, it's still sitting there, it's still being read. It's taking a long time to get through this one and not because it's boring, just because it's, it's very long and I'm listening to it on audiobook. But then I feel like it's also a bad boy because of the subject matter. It, it brings up a lot of taboo sexual subjects. So there's a lot, a lot of incest. And then there's relationships with people that are underage, which is uh, really uncomfortable. And there's a lot of things that Anne Rice likes to focus on that are sexually taboo that just makes you feel really uncomfortable when you read it. And yet I keep reading it and I am enjoying the book. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bad boy. This book is a bad, bad boy. <laughs> Book number nine is Friend Zone. A great read, but not interested in it right now. For this one, I'm gonna pick kind of a strange choice. I'm gonna pick Roots by Alex Haley. I bought this book, I don't even know when. It was a really, really, really long time ago. As much as I know I will love it, and as much as I want to read it in the sense that I've had it, I'd like to read it, I never pick it up. I don't know if it's because of the length, it's really intimidatingly large, <laughs> which shouldn't be a problem for me really, but, um, 
it's it's just it's just sat there it's sat there forever i know that i eventually want to read it but it's always like well i don't want to read it right now and then i see other things that i'd rather pick up so i pick those up instead if you've read roots tell me tell me to read this tell me to get into this because it shouldn't feel intimidating but for some reason it does the final question let's get nosy tag three or more people this is a very unique book tag, and I don't know if the people who I'm gonna tag are gonna wanna do this, but I'm leaving it up to their choice, and don't feel bad if you don't want to do it. So I'm gonna tag three people who I think have some of the most unique and hilarious book tags, because I think that they'll have a lot of fun with this, or at least make something fun out of it. First, I'm gonna tag KC from Lost in the Bookcase, and I just, I think she's so funny. She's very clever and quick-witted, and I really enjoy her channel, especially her book tags. The second person I wanna tag is Pay from Attention, and he has some of the most creative book tags that I have ever seen. And I can't wait to see more because he does claymation and he created this little clay guy named Clay. <laughs> and I would love to see Clay do the book dating tag. I don't know if that would be too much, but I think it might be funny. And third, I would like to tag Kelsey from I Read Today because Kelsey is hilarious. And she's also very quick-witted. I, I, I very much appreciate people who can think quickly on their toes and have such good humor because I'm, I'm not like that, I'm not that funny. <laughs> So <laughs> those are the people I'd like to tag. However, I really think that this would be a fun one to go around during the month of February. So I tag all of you and I really hope you get a chance to do it. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe so you can see more of my tags. I have one more coming up and, and hopefully it goes well. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Bye.